Hi everybody, Bob Gager from Adobe here with today's installment of Ask Bob, where I get to answer questions posed by our Facebook fans. Today's question comes from Rita, and Rita wants to know how to merge multiple photos together, get rid of the background, and create a ghostly look. Well, Rita, that's pretty straightforward to do in Photoshop Elements. Let me show you how. First thing we need to do is get a couple of images. I'm going to start off here in my Elements Organizer and actually switch to the Places view because I know I've got a couple images that I took down in San Diego uh, that might work pretty good for this. So I'm going to switch to the Places view, search the map. I want to search San Diego. And San Diego, California is where I took them. And that little red pin shows me that I've got three images taken in San Diego. If I double click on it, the list of images over here on the left will get filtered down to just those images taken in San Diego. So I'm going to select this one of me and this one of my daughter Alyssa and open those two images up in the Photoshop Elements Editor. So with them selected, just come down here to the action bar and click on Editor. All right, so now I've got these photos opened up in the Photoshop Elements Editor. You can see I've got the photo of me and I've got the photo of Alyssa. So the first thing I want to do is put these two photos into one file. If I take the photo of me down here in the bottom, if I open up the photo bin, I can see both of the photos that I currently have open. If I select the photo of Alyssa by double clicking on it and then just drag that photo of me from the photo bin and drop it on top of that photo of Alyssa, what I've done is merge the two photos together. You can see over here on the right in our layers panel, I've got the photo of Alyssa as the background layer and I've got the photo of me as a layer right on top of that. Think of layers as just a way of stacking multiple photographs on top of each other. So I don't need my photo bin open anymore. I'm going to close that. And now that I've got this picture of me, what I want to do is get rid of the background so that we can see Alyssa poking through. And the easiest way to do that is to use the quick selection tool, that's this tool right here, uh, to select me. So I'm just going to drag over me kind of like that and you can see the quick selection tool has done a lot of the work of helping me select just part of my image. What's selected is surrounded by these little uh, marching ants as they're called. So a couple drags to get all of me. Right, I want to get my fingers here, I want to get my hand if it didn't get in the first place, get my shoulder, uh, get all of my head, um, kind of like that. And you can see there's a couple spots where it's actually selected too much. For whatever reason, as I dragged across my sweatshirt, it also selected some of the fence. Well, if I hold my Alt or Option key down and then drag where I don't want the selection, it'll actually remove that part of the image from my selection. So I can clean up the fence. You can see over here underneath my hand, it kind of got a little overzealous. Uh, if I hold the Alt or Option key down, I can clean that up as well. So very quickly I can do some fine-tuning of my selection to get it pretty good. The next thing I want to do is open up my tool options because in the tool options for the quick selection tool is a really powerful button called Refine Edge. If I click on Refine Edge this dialog opens up and don't be scared there's a lot of stuff in here it's a really powerful tool but all I want to use is this feature right here called Feather. What the feather slider does is sort of soften the edge of my selection. You can see right now the selection, this is the mask that's showing. So white is where I had selected, black is where I didn't have selected. You can see it's a pretty sharp edge between the two. I want to soften that edge up a little bit and I do that with the feather slider. So I just slide this up. I'm going to go kind of extreme so you can see it's really soften that edge. I don't want that much, I just want a little bit of feathering. The amount you're going to use is going to depend on your photo. Uh, for this photo, I probably only want four or five pixels, right? So just barely soft. And then down here in the output section, I just want to select Layer Mask and click OK. And then Elements will create what's called a layer mask with my selection with some nice soft edges. And the way layer masks work is everywhere there's black in a layer mask, that part of the layer is hidden. Everywhere it's white, that part of the layer is showing. If I temporarily hide this background layer with Alyssa on it, you can actually see what's going on with this layer with me. The pixels are still there, all that background's still there. I'm just hiding it by painting black on this layer mask. Layer masks are a really powerful feature of Photoshop Elements 
uh, and you'll use them in many of the more advanced techniques. So anyway, now that we've got me selected from the background, we'll show Alyssa again. And we've got both of us. If the two images aren't sized quite right, like in this example, I'm actually bigger than that compared to Alyssa. So I'll just grab the, um, let me hide my tool options to get some more screen real estate. I'll just grab my move tool, click on me to select me, and then this little box in the corner, I can drag that up and you can see as I do that, it makes me bigger. So I'll just kind of adjust things to make it look like I'm the right size compared to my daughter. And then once I'm happy with that, click this green check mark to commit those changes. So now I've got an image with me uh, and Alyssa, even though we weren't standing at the same time, she actually took the picture of me and I took the picture of her uh, down here in San Diego. So that's how I would composite two images together and get rid of the background. You also asked about how to create kind of a ghostly effect. Well, if I wanted me to be kind of a ghost, uh, what I would do is select that layer over here on the right, that layer uh, that has me in it. And this control right here, the opacity control, it starts off at 100%. Basically what this does is control how transparent that layer is. So I can slide this slider way down and you can see I'm becoming more and more transparent or I can slide it back up and bring myself back in and anywhere in between I can make it 100% opaque and I don't look ghostly at all or maybe down around 65% and I can uh, look a little ghostly. Uh, one of the power tricks for this opacity control is instead of clicking the little down arrow to get the slider, all I really need to do is put my mouse over the word opacity and click and hold and then I can drag right or left. I get a real-time feedback of what I'm changing so it's a much faster way uh, to control the opacity of an image. So there you go, set the opacity to the amount of ghostliness you're interested in, and we've now got the image uh, edited uh, as you were looking for. Hope that helps, and thanks for asking the question. Take care.